Killer Volt Bikes, welcome to the YouTube channel. Today, we've got this brand spanking new Telerius Sting. It's got zero miles on the clock, or it had zero miles on the clock when it got passed to us. The mission today, we're not gonna ride it. We're gonna convert this to 72 volt. And in the future, potentially also 96 volt. But for now, we're gonna start with 72 volt. Now this runs on an encoder style motor. So what we're gonna do is remove the stock battery remove the controller, take one of our far driver encoder edition controllers and try and just directly plug and play the Telerium motor directly to the far driver controller. Now, if that doesn't work, plan B is to use the encoder to hall sensor converter, which we recently reviewed on Tech Talks. So that's today's plan. We're gonna start stripping this bike down, taking it apart, removing the stuff we don't need. And then we're gonna show you some of the stuff which we're gonna use to upgrade it and make it a bit faster. So let's go, let's do this. So if we just have a quick rundown of some of the bits we've taken out, obviously we took the bash guard off the underneath. We had to take out the front fender or front mud guard just to get to this, which is like a nice horn cover. Stock battery has been removed. Don't need that. And stock controller as well. On the back of this, it says 60 volt rated voltage. 12 volt DC braking and under voltage 46 volts DC. So that's what it says on the stock controller there. Good time to take a look at some of the bits we're gonna use to upgrade it now. So that's, some of this stuff's going back on bash guard, mud guard, horn cover, but stock battery and stock controller, probably not going back on. Definitely not going back on. We're gonna free this Telerius thing from the liberty of being stock. So this is what we're using in terms of battery for this conversion, EBMX 72 volt, 42 AH pack. And just for now, for testing, we're gonna try out this Far Driver Encoder Edition controller just to see if we can get the bike moving off the encoders straight into an encoder controller. That'll mean we don't have to use a converter. If it doesn't work, then we are going to use a converter to convert it into a hall sensor signal, and then we're going to use a hall sensor far driver. But for now, that's what we're going to do. We're going to test with this far driver. So welcome to the soldering department. We've got here the far driver wiring loom, and then we should have 
Yeah, this is the Teleria plug from the Teleria loom. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna splice some of these cables and we're gonna add this like a little extra head onto here. So this will be some unicorn controller that has a Teleria factory plug and a standard encoder plug as well. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna do all the little bits that need to be done to get that rocking and rolling. Right, so the wiring harness for Gaza is done, ready to go and try and plug this in now. So we've come to that point now where it's all wired up. We've got test throttle connected so we don't have to reach into the wiring loom to wire up this throttle just yet because we're just still just testing. I'm going to plug the battery in now, so. We're going to power up the controller using this. So our controller should be booted now. I'm going to test that fact. Saying motor hall error, so. Twenty minutes later. So I don't know how to call this one. It's kind of a 50-50 win-loss situation. There was a point where the fire driver wasn't wanting to work. I contacted the guy who created the encoder to hall sensor converter and he let me know that the converter may need some calibrating. So we may need to run the motor for several cycles just to get it calibrated, which left us in a bit of a catch-22 situation because the fire driver isn't going to allow the motor to spin until the hall sensors are calibrated. So we went for this cheap and cheerful 72 volt unbranded sine wave controller. It doesn't have any kind of hall testing with a Savaton. You have to do the testing with a far drive. You've got the auto learning. With this, you just have to manually swap the phases around until you get to a pattern that works. So I thought we'd go with that and then we got it. It was kind of successful and kind of working. and then it kind of blew the controller. So it probably wasn't the right phase, even though it looked kind of convincing, it wasn't the right phase combination. What we're gonna to do today is because we're a little bit, you know, stuck for time with today's episode, we're gonna call it quits here, but we're gonna revisit this very soon, probably later on in the week, 
when I've had time to acquire an ASI controller. Now, the reason we're going to use an ASI controller is because the guy who masterminded the encoder to hall sensor converter, that's what he's designed it for, and that's what he's used it with, the ASI controllers. So we'll get one of those. Hopefully, it works all hunky-dory, and then we'll continue the 72-volt Telerius Sting Quest. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed today's video, please make sure you like down there. Hit the subscribe button as well, and we'll see you next time.